everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're interviewing Kevin Hancock about his book, The Seventh Power. Please hold up. Yay! <laughs> One CEO's <laughs> journey, um, the business of shared leadership. Um, and in the previous um, segment, we were talking about um, The Seventh Power and how um, really the it's a completely different way of um, thinking about leadership, but it's the idea that we have shared power, in fact, infinite power versus the idea that we have limited power, only you know the people at the top get it. How can we actually move people to understanding that they do have this power and that they can actually um, grab it and, and not grab it, but share it, I would say. Um, one of the things that you're talking about in that second segment is um, how you can get someone to feel trusted, respected, and, and, and heard when you're a leader and the kind of changes that you need. And I love the idea of instead of changing in, in followership, you know, we have like there's changes that we have to make in terms of how we follow because a lot of people um, – it's not only how you lead, but also how you follow, because we have this kind of contorted way of thinking about how we should just follow mindlessly. Um, and I think you'd pointed out accurately, because we're afraid that um, if we make a decision that someone's going to come down and like, you know, nail us for it, you're responsible now, <laughs> not me. So, <laughs> so how you go about <laughs> um, sharing power and, um, I wanted to go into the last point that you're making, which was um, the idea of, of, of specifically, it's a very different way of asking questions. And so you'd mentioned one idea would be like, oh, you know, what, sh what do you think we should do? Um, but when you're, when you're reaching to someone like, I don't know if you could come up with a heuristic or a set of like three or four questions that you can ask that's maybe a different way. So let's say in the COVID example, um, you had said that you had asked, like, do you want to come back to work? And if you do want to come back to work, what should we do? I mean, that seems to be simple things, but what are the ways that if you're working one-on-one -on -one with person, what would you, what are the questions you would ask? Yeah. So I think that it, that, uh, well, that's a great question in, in and of itself. I think it's really so about um, how we ask questions and the purpose of asking them. This is something that, that has really been a change for me. In my younger days, before my voice condition as a manager, I honestly think I asked questions questions to judge the answer and my satisfaction with it and if i didn't like the answer i would then talk more in the hope of changing that person's perspective but uh i think that's really the wrong way to go about it what i say in the book now uh it's one of the seven lessons in the book it's that listening, it's for understanding, not judgment. So I would say it's not so much what questions we ask as it is how we listen. And we're listening simply to understand someone. So to be specific, what I've really worked with our managers on is not feeling the need to respond to what everybody says, when someone says something, my favorite response is this. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> and letting letting that perspective just live on its own that so often if you watch <laughs> leaders, they'll want to follow up and qualify or redirect what someone said. And that's really such a simple, a silly exercise. So it's getting beyond right and wrong. When someone says something, it isn't right and it isn't wrong. It's just what someone uh, is actually feeling and experiencing at that moment in time. And if we have 550 people uh, who are part of our company who work here, the truth is can only be found in the the collective understanding of what all 550 think. That's the truth. It's not what I think. Uh, you know, I picture, I used to actually teach way back um, 
Russian and Soviet history. And so I picture a, say, communist-style military parade <laughs> through the central square with everyone marching and chanting in unison. Now, is that really, though, alignment? Right. No, that's intimidation. That's yeah. that's mm-hmm. power overreaching. Mm-hmm. That, that alignment, uh, this is a, a paradigm shift we have to make, too. Alignment is not the consensus of thought. Mm-hmm. Alignment is dialogue that allows for all thought. Mm-hmm. And so now when we meet with employees... The very purpose of the dialogue is fundamentally different. Mm, yeah, because we're always uh, in, in corporate America. I, I used to be in corporate America a long time ago. It may have changed. But the idea is to get buy-in, right? Let's get their buy-in yes. so we can like, yes. shove this down their throats. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, because here – and here's the thing that I would okay, – I'm going to be a manager listening to this and say – well, that's really nice, but like we have a timeline to hit <laughs> and by doing this and listening and having all these dialogues and addressing all these issues, it's going to take so long to do this, Kevin. Why? Like, is there a shortcut? What's the short version of doing this? You know, because uh, there's this, te- I, there's this like this, it's a collaborative and com- competition. There's always that tension. So how do you yeah, address that? Right. It, it, it does take pay for process. This is the leap that leaders have to make, which can be frustrating because if I'm the leader, the manager, and I already know what I want, right. why do we need any dialogue or process, right? right. That's the old model. Right. But here's, here's how I've come to think about it. People support that which they help to create. So if you want to create deep commitment, leadership can't be about pulling rank and using your title. It's got to be about facilitating dialogue that creates understanding and commitment and passion and that in the long run that will outperform it may seem quicker in the short run to say here's my list right Right. do this this this, and this Uh, and but in the long run i believe uh, dispersing power getting everyone involved and giving everyone a voice will always outperform the other model it's just it just makes sense if everybody leads and if everybody's vibrant we're gonna outrun uh that old model of show up and follow directions and take orders yeah i'm well here's the thing that okay here's my to be a devil's advocate so you're in the er you're an er doc in the er room right and you're like now what do you think should we suture them up now or you know, like that, that's not going to work if I get every, like every nurse's opinion and like, like, so there's a trade off, right? Yeah. Let's jump in on that. It's so good. You're prodding on this because that's a great example. So the point is uh, in that example with the doctor and the nurses, yeah, their uh, conversations around what happens when we're in the emergency room need to take place before we get in the emergency room because there are going to be moments in every business where you've got to act and act immediately. So this doesn't negate that. This is about building consensus. In your great example, it's about taking time for the team that's going to have to make split second decisions in the emergency room to create um, a collaborative 
vibe around how that gets done before we go in to the emergency room. Right. Yeah. So I think part of it is if you have enough trust and process and understanding what those people want generally, what everyone wants, then when you're in the emergency room, you bear like, oh yeah, Lillian always likes to make sure that we have all their things. You know, you have like a checklist of things already built in your head. So if you right. do all the proper work beforehand, when the emergencies happen, you know pretty clearly what everyone wants and how they think. So you can yes. act appropriately. Got it. Um, Oh gosh, I want to talk to you more. Do you, um, I have? I want to talk to you more if we have time to talk about um, the out, uh, um, higher calling. Do you have time to talk about that? Uh, of course, I okay. do. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so we've been talking uh, to Kevin Hancock about. Um, can you hold up your book? Yes. The seventh power, and in the next segment, we're going to talk about. Um, having someone, and, and it seems like such an unusual idea of working with someone and pulling out their higher calling. So thank you so much. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.